Valerie again, and I'm here to interview my sister Sandy and her personal testimony of how the Lord came into her life and saved her, and just what a miracle he's done. And being her sister, I can really attest to that. So, hello Sandy. Hello. <laughs> so tell us, um, what your life was like before you gave your life to the Lord? I was a very angry person. I think you're well aware of that. Yes, was, very scary. Yeah. <laughs> I was very aggressive. I just wanted to hurt people and hurt myself, and I was very bitter and angry about being alive. I was upset I, since my mom told me she was going to have an abortion, and, and then my dad talked her out of it. I was just very bitter and upset because I was upset that I was born, and I thought life sucked, and I was not even just like pro-choice, I was like pro-abortion. I just thought, well, life sucks, so just end it before it begins. And I was just, I was very angry and just very upset, discontent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, what were the kind of things you were getting into when you were younger? When I was younger? Oh. Like when you were hanging around the gang people? Yeah, and... yeah. I was into like punching things a lot, like lockers, and I was hanging out with people that were in gangs and starting to go that route and um, I was into drinking too. My mom started partying and stuff and having all the people bring beer and stuff. I would just, you probably remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would gather, bring their own beer and then I would just take it and we had built this little fort on the side of the house and then I would steal it and then invite all the neighborhood kids over and <laughs> get hammered when I was like 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was not very good. Um, but yeah, just very, um, yeah. And very explosive. Uh, yeah. She was so angry all the time. Like, her response would be anger. If you made her mad, she'd punch you. There was no, like, thinking People about it. People were afraid it. of me, yeah. You were, you, that, was that was how you responded to all the hurt and the pain in your life was by being strong. Right. Yeah, because what happened was all the abuse that happened in my life made me feel like, well, I don't want to be the victim, so if I'm tough, people will be afraid of me, and then I won't get hurt. Yeah. And so when I was like eight years old, I started becoming obsessed and fixated with, I've got to be the strongest. And so I remember like exercising, like using weights, lifting weights, and doing like hundreds of sit-ups when I was like eight years old because I was just so obsessed with being the strongest so that nobody could hurt me. And you even had some experience with uh, people that are into witchcraft and demonic things, like you were telling me a while back about your friend with the toy. Oh, yes. You should explain that story. Yeah, a it was so interesting because I remember all these, like, mom was into all these, like, online parties. There was lots of new age people, and there was this... Um, this guy who he was like, oh, I have my friend Toy, and it was this little demon basically, and and I remember he, we were in a group of friends, and he was like, I'm gonna put this in you, right? And, and and the other guy was like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. And he's he was sitting down, and he and he put Toy into this guy, and his voice changed, his eye, it was the creepiest thing. He could control him to do whatever he wanted him to do. And then he called Toy back out of him, and when he did, he was standing up, and the guy, and this was my friend, like, he wasn't faking it or anything, he was like, wait, what, how am I standing up? Like, and he was, because he was sitting down when he put Toy in him, which was really creepy, I mean, he looked... Like you could tell he was I mean he was possessed basically yeah, and I remember that my friend was 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 I was very upset and angry and emotional and just wanted to die um, Pretty much most of the time and so he was like oh well, toy can fix this I'll put toy in your head, and then he'll fix it for you. Yeah, and I remember that he he Said he was going to and then the next time I saw him I was like uh, what happened nothing happened and he was like, oh, well, Toy came back, and he was cussing and stuff. And, 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 and so Toy never went in my head, which was, I think, the Lord's provision and knowing that, you know, yeah. that's not good. So, yeah. Well, and then he put that friend in your life to lead you to the Lord, right? Yeah, it was interesting because I was in, in junior high. I was very, like, I had friends that were, like, I remember I had a few Christian friends, and they were the ones that were, like, trying to hold me back from like when I would get upset and angry and want to hurt people. And so, um, 
what happened was I I was going that route, you know, I was all into soccer and, and sports and athletics, which was good, but then I was into this, you know, the group that was into gangs and other stuff and, and intimidating people and stuff just to try and not get hurt. And, um, and we moved, you remember in Garden Grove, we moved like across the street. It was like down the road and it happened to be the district line. So I ended up having to go to Orange High, which was like seven miles the other direction instead of Garden Grove High, which was like down the road. And, um, and that was where, because I was totally obsessed with sports, that was where my friend um, from soccer invited me to church after, well, she invited me to hang out and then she invited me to go to church. And I was like, okay. And I was like, it was better than doing whatever else I was doing. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so then I started going to church and it was like something clicked and, and, and I accepted the Lord. And then it was like, I remember it was sort of like watching a movie. Like all of a sudden I looked back and it was like, it wasn't me and I was somebody different. And, um, everyone around me was like very shocked because yeah, I was very angry and very explosive and kind of scary. I would yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, and then there was that difference where you just were more kind and giving and wanting to serve God and be right in His eyes. Like, what a change it made in your life that others could see. But even <clears throat> though you went through that change, um, you've gone through some trials in your life and you still stand firm in the Lord. So what trials have you gone through? Well, um, I would say... The biggest trials that I've had would, would be mostly, I was married for 12 years and then finding out that my husband had had an affair with my closest friend who was the pastor's wife. That was very upsetting. I remember for a few months I felt like God had cheated on me. And I think this is what happens to a lot of people. They're like, oh, I'm not going to go to church because it's a bunch of hypocrites and sinners and why would I want to be around those people? And church is not about you know, there's going to be sinners that gather at a church. That's just how yes. it works. And to blame God for people's free will and free choice is not fair. I agree. And so I realized that, you know, it's not about, yeah, people are going to let me down. You know, friends, family, people are going to let me down. That's, that's life, you know, but God is not ever going to leave or forsake me. And so I, and I think this is something that, Happens to a lot of people, you know, they, they blame God for other people's actions or even for what's the result of sin in this world, you know, mm -hmm. sickness. And, and that's my other major trial, <laughs> which leads right into that is having a lot of health issues, you know, working really hard. And I thought that, you know, oh, God blessed me because, you know, I was choosing to follow him and, you know, graduating top of my class and then, you know, working with you know, rockets and radars and lasers and satellites and just having, you know, it was just, I love my job, you know, and then thinking, well, God put me there strategically. And then to have it all taken away all at the same time, you know, with mom dying and then going through the divorce and then losing my health, um, not long after that. And then sort of a gradual issue started, you know, getting worse. And, and a lot of people will say, well, how can a good God allow bad things to happen? It's, well, there's sin in this world. And He's more concerned about our character than our comfort, but, exactly. you know, his original design wasn't for us to have these issues, you know, that's after sin entered the world, and so, um, so yeah, so choosing to follow him in the suffering and to praise him for it, because I, there's so many things that have happened in my life with, you know, what I went through with my ex, and then mm -hmm. with the health issues, and then you know, just a church. lot of different things. Yeah. Well, that, a lot of people, and I think that's a good point because a lot of people put unrealistic expectations on leaders as if they're perfect. And the yeah. thing is, when you go to a church, you're going to be with imperfect people who all are striving for the same goal, but we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. And to alienate yourself from God because of what another person chose to do who happened to say they were following him. You know, I mean, that's a great example of not letting that push you away. Because we need to be united and with other believers. That's what strengthens us. So we can't judge everyone as a whole based on a few people's mistakes. Well, and that's it. The other thing, too, is people think they have to be able to trust everybody. And, you know, I mean, it's still hard for me to trust people, you know? Like, to go through different things that I've gone through in my life as well as you know, what, what happened, you know, I mean, basically being part of the church sex scandal and not realizing it until later, 
you know, um, yeah, that still affects me. Like, these things, people think that they have to get fixed before they come to God, and that's not how it works. Yes. You can come to God just as you are, and I know that, okay, yeah, so I'm going to be a, a little bit more cautious, maybe, and, and that, that can be good, you know, and not have unrealistic expectations, you know, and hopefully that doesn't ever happen again, but at the same token, you know, I know that God is not going to leave or forsake me, and that's the important part. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and also knowing that, you know, sometimes when you become a believer, we still go through trials and suffering. You know, you weren't miraculously healed, and even now you're still going through it, and we pray for the Lord to to bring us this healing, but sometimes God says no or wait. And so yeah. you've been going through this for such a long time. What would be your advice to somebody who also is suffering and struggling in their faith? I would say that if you're, if you're physically suffering, you know, and, and I've been dealing with chronic health issues for about 20 years. Um, when you're living in chronic pain day in and day out and then slowly losing functionality of to do basic things it can be so discouraging and so frustrating and and the lie that that you're gonna it's gonna pop in your head is well it's not worth it I don't want to be a burden you know I should just die or I should just you know uh, check out or you know the doctors will try and give you a bunch of pain pills and and why well, should just turn to that so that I don't have to feel it and you know it says in Philippians you know we're supposed to share in Christ's suffering you know that we're, we're called to suffer we know that there's going to be trials in this life and when we choose to take those trials and instead of going Lord just take it away just take it away which is of course going to be the initial reaction but sometimes that's not what's going to happen and to turn to him Instead, and say, Lord, help me through this. Carry me through this. And when we seek him in it and, and say, Lord, show me the purpose in this. And, and for me, I see the purpose in it for myself. And this may not be the case for everybody. But for me, I was a total type A, strong-willed performance addict. I mean, graduating top of my class, always working really hard. I mean, pretty much a workaholic. Yeah. You know, total perfectionist, trying to do everything just right and... I mean, almost never sleeping and, and just go, 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 do, do, do. And, and there's um, a psalm, Psalm 4610, it says, Be still and know that I am God. And then uh, another place, I think it's in Psalms, talks about Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And when everything is taken away, then I still struggle to be still and know that he is God. That being still and just being mm -hmm. is so hard. It's... It's so hard, for me, anyway. I mean, some people that might be easier for. And I can see how God is trying to show me, like, okay, if I take both your feet and, and one of your arm and part of your other arm, can you be still? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be still. I still want to do. And, and that being content and not having to do is so important, and I still struggle with it. You know, so I can see, you know, a lot of times it's really easy to go, well, God, why are you doing this? Instead of asking and saying, Lord, what am I missing? Exactly. What, what am I needing to learn from this? Because at the end of the day, you can take someone who's grown up and they've gotten everything their whole life, spoon fed to them, they've had no health problems, no relationship trials, no any of that stuff. And when you look at their character, what's their character? Are they going to be able to empathize? Yeah. Because I've met so many people that have been able to be helped because of what I've been through that they would just go through it themselves, you know, and, and maybe not even make it out on the other end. You know, some people go and, and kill themselves for, for some of these things that happen when, when people abuse you, you know, in certain ways and then you grow up with that, that people, they don't, they don't want to live or they're, I mean, I even had like a neuropsych evaluation. They're like, well, you're a statistical anomaly. We throw out your daddy. You should have been a drug addict or a prostitute. You know, it's like, yeah, because there's the no way. explanation in this world for why when you grow up a certain way that you should be okay. You know, and, and am I, have I arrived? Am I okay? Well, compared to the world standards, yeah, you know, but do I struggle still? Yeah. I mean, those are going to be weak spots that, yeah, I have to you know, give to the Lord on a, on a continual basis, you know. So that, that's good, because you also could not only blame God, but you could even blame the people, because technically you could say, well, the doctor messed me up, which you did, 
and you're yeah. able to forgive and move forward and there's growth in that like because there's you could point the finger at anybody true and true. yet you choose to to rely on God and to trust in him because really who else do we have to turn to yeah people say I mean, oh, well you should sue them and you should it's like well money isn't gonna fix it it's not gonna make me able to walk again and no. not have pain it's not it's just not you know it doesn't it doesn't profit anything yeah, and that's a good point. Like, we both grew up in the same home, and yeah, we struggled with different things. I know. Uh, it's, it's very interesting how we can have so many things in common, and yet be completely opposite at the same yes. time. Yeah. So that's that's good, good advice you. for those who are suffering, for those who have mm -hmm. gone through trials. Um, be encouraged by this. Like, that's really good advice. I mean, see what God's doing in your life, and... Yeah, that's and awesome. I wouldn't see the miracles of his provision. You know, I think that a lot of people they think, oh, I've got to work, and 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 working hard unto the Lord as hard as you can. Everything that you do is completely biblical and and, and an admirable thing. But sometimes we start to become self dependent, where we think that I'm the one who does this. This is why I have this. Instead of recognizing that everything comes from the hand of God, mm -hmm. and so when something is missing, it's so easy to be like blame God, but then when you have everything you think you, you work for, you think you deserve it, and something is not there, we feel entitled. You know, especially I think in this day and age and culture, oh, yeah. there's this sense of like, well, I deserve. No, we don't deserve anything. We deserve eternal condemnation because of sin. You know, I mean, if you're a liar, you know, how many people have lied? That makes you a liar. How many people have lusted after somebody? It's the same as committing adultery, you know? So who's a, a lying, thieving adulteress? Is almost everybody, you know? And so it's so easy to say, oh, well, I, I, I've been good, you know? And no, I'm, I'm sinful at, at heart, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to yeah. make bad choices. Everybody is, you know? And it's that grace. And when we realize that the things that we have are not because we deserve them, but solely by the grace of God, you start to see his hand of provision when, oh my gosh, like even recently, you know, praying, you know, okay, Lord, I don't know what to do. I can't, I can't do dishes. I can't, how do I open the fridge, you know, and, and then teaching the dog how to open the fridge and, and how quick he learned it. And then the Lord providing somebody to come help me, you know, that, that answer to prayer that I would never on my own be like, oh, I'm going to pay somebody to help me or, or be able to find somebody that's, you know, going to yeah. be somewhat reasonable. And, and then the Lord answers the prayer. And if I never had that need, I wouldn't see those miracles. So. Yeah, that's true. Well, is there um, any last points you'd like to make in your testimony before we close up? Mm, everyone has a choice. Everyone yeah. has a choice. You can choose. Either, I mean, you're going to suffer. <laughs> you know, to what level and what extent and what your trials are going to be for everyone is different. You know, but... When you choose the Lord, you you know you're not going to go through it on your own. And in the end, it will be worth it. Exactly. That's yeah. beautiful. All right. So <laughs> there you go. There you have it. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed that and it was helpful. And anyone struggling in these areas or who's going through suffering or chronic illness. Um, okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>